In the second installment of this three-part series examining the initial performance of DirectX 12 games on Intel Arc and Linux, I delve into the questionable group of games. These games ran, but sort of barely ran, generally at low frame rates, with DX12 mode enabled. Also, they may have crashed, too. I'll be taking a look at Cyberpunk 2077, The Outer Worlds, The Finals, and Borderlands 3 in this video. For a comprehensive introduction to the series, I recommend checking out the opener of the first video, where I talk about games that ran decently on my Linux and Intel Arc setup. I don't want to reinvent the wheel here, and I think what I have in that first introduction is well fleshed out. Now, let's explore why these titles landed in the questionable category. Cyberpunk 2077 inadvertently set my expectations a tad too high as far as Alchemist GPUs are concerned. Buzz around the internet suggested ARC GPUs had to masquerade as non-Intel hardware so Steam would start Cyberbug on Linux and ARC configurations. At times, I wonder if that's what's changed between now and December for a lot of these DX12 games that miraculously found an ability to start on Arc and Linux setups. Anyway, settings. Starting with scaling off, texture quality on high. Off to the races. The benchmark starts off at a sluggish 37 frames per second, backed with a 1% low of 35 frames per second and 0.1% lows of 7 frames per second. And... While I was saying all of that, volumetric fog just kicked in, yo. Moving from the indoor confines, frame rates see a slight uptick, briefly reaching the low to mid 40s before stabilizing back in the high 30s. Nighttime gameplay hovers in the high 30s, with a 1% low in the lower 30s and the 0.1% lows at around 10 frames per second. Somehow I got stuck in this hell where I'm being chased by these cyber psychos. And the game crashes. This is why it's solidly in the questionable category at best. Getting back into the game with XCSS balanced settings, things pick up quite a bit to the lowish 40s, and I think reflections got a little bit of a boost visually, too. Things just aren't smooth. And the reflections just aren't there yet either. The game still runs much better than it did in December, where the frame rate stayed in the 20s practically no matter what I did with the settings. I think the improvement in frame rates proves that something else is going on other than stolen Romulan technology on Intel's part. With high settings, it ran in the mid to high teens before, so there's some progress with Cyberpunk's performance, but it still isn't reaching 3060 Ti levels, even on Linux, yet. In my Epic Games Store library, I've got The Outer Worlds. You might have a bad initial impression seeing how the game's title screen presents itself here. However, don't pass judgment just yet. Things get more complicated from this point forward. In the settings menu, I opt for the high settings preset and decide to turn off any upscalers. Performance wise, I'm seeing frame rates in the mid to high 40s as I navigate away from Ada. However, when I'm exploring more graphically intensive scenes, not just staring at walls or screens, the frame rate dips to the high 30s and even into the 20s. Walking on the path on the way to Edgewater, things are stuck in the 20s. Yikes. Back in the settings menu, I turn on FSR2. There was a slight improvement. Frame rates touched the 40s initially. However, this was mostly while admiring the ground. This isn't what we play games for. As I ascended a hill leading to Edgewater, the frame rates took a nosedive, plunging into the teens. The game morphed into what felt like a fluid PowerPoint presentation, far from a smooth experience. There's a silver lining during cutscenes, where frame rates soared to nearly 70 frames per second, offering a glimpse of what could be. Reflecting on my attempts to launch the Outer Worlds back in December and January when it refused to start, the progress no, is undeniable, technically marking an infinite Nothing improvement. Still, the there's much more room for improvement left. The finals joins the list of titles that spring to life on Linux, provided you keep your Intel Arc GPU's identity under wraps from Steam. However, capturing smooth gameplay turned out to be a challenge, likely due to quirks with using the Flatpak version of OBS. A reminder that not all is seamless in the world of Flatpak packages. I guess that's a controversial take. Instead of wandering alone in the practice arena, I decided to send two birds to Stovacore with one Batleth. Man up and play around with strength. Strangers, you know, 
For those curious about how the finals performs on Linux and Alchemist's flagship car. Multiplayer on Linux? It works. As for running on Intel Arc? Yes, it technically works, but don't expect the silky excess of frames needed for a competitive edge, even on the 16GB A770 just yet. I set the game to high settings with TAAU upscaling enabled because, if I remember correctly, turning off all upscaling wasn't an option. The frame time graph resembled an electrocardiogram more than anything. We're starting with average frame rates around 35 FPS, with 1% lows at 16 frames per second and 0.1% lows at just 3 frames per second. The game's reflections, possibly an artistic direction or a Linux driver hiccup, mimic Bob Ross stippling technique. Activating Intel XTSS momentarily catapults frame rates into the 40s, though the 1% and 0.1% lows remain largely unchanged. The final on Linux with the top Intel Arc Alchemist GPU. It's still mooing. Put it back in the oven. <sighs> Borderlands 3. I'm having a hard time with this one. The capture was botched and I can't get the game to play in DX12 mode again. I've been going back and forth on whether I should include this, but this is the video to include this information in. Starting off the built-in benchmark, Frame rates are in the high 30s, and while the frame time graph again looks like an electrocardiogram, notice that for the long pauses you see on screen, there aren't corresponding spikes on the graph. Those instances are where the OBS capture itself stalls out. There's this sort of unspoken minimum established frame rate of 60, but I was really impressed at the smoothness I saw in this benchmark and how everything worked in concert together. The DX12 screen capture deceives you into thinking this was an ultra stuttery mess, though admittedly, maybe things were rendering slowly. But there was this smoothness even in the high 30s, the reflections and shadows were great, even the volumetric fog integrated well. Really, this benchmark in DX12 was much more cohesive than the benchmark I captured a few months ago during the holidays. A bit lower frames, but again, this wouldn't run on my A770 before. And running games in DX12 mode generally seems more challenging than running them in DX11 mode. Speaking of this game in DX11 mode, I have some things to say about that, but this is a DX12 video. And that brings us to the end of this video. I'll keep this conclusion brief. For a more detailed wrap up, I encourage you to refer to the conclusion in the games that ran decently video, as my sentiments largely remain the same. It seems like it's a waiting game now, and I hope the A770 can match the frame rates of its Nvidia and AMD rivals. That's all for now. Take care.